late economic growth. In fact, uh, if we were to see uh, the institutions such as IDPL, NMDC, NFC, IICT, and so forth, they were all set up in Hyderabad. Because of the fact that public sector undertakings, these huge investments, came up in Hyderabad, Hyderabad as an area grew beyond any other place in the state. That is the reason why but once these kind of institutions come up, then automatically it leads to a transformation. It leads to better salaried employees coming out of that location, coming out of that place, which in turn leads to a cyclic effect where better institutions would come up, overall economic growth takes place, and then the, the city starts moving and growing. Unfortunately, for us, it so happened that 90% of the entire PSUs which were allocated to the erstwhile state of Andhra Pradesh have all come up only in Hyderabad. And because of that, Hyderabad grew at a much faster pace than any other place in the state. In fact, so much so that uh, the services sector in Telangana, for instance, grew, is now currently positioned at uh, a 62.87% uh, the tertiary sector, whereas the national average is 55%. And uh, in the same, the tertiary sector State of Andhra Pradesh, we stand at mere 40 percent. So the agriculture sector, what is, what should be at 17 percent, as a national average, we are at 35 percent. The services sector, which is the tertiary sector, which should have actually been at 55 percent, which is the national average, we are at 40 percent whereas Telangana is at 62.87% of the state's GSDP comes from just the services sector, that is the tertiary sector, and predominantly from Hyderabad. So until and unless you have a similar kind of situation also boost the Andhra Pradesh's economy, we will never see the services, the rise of the services sector. It's only the manufacturing sector that is, we are on par with the national average, which is 25%, which is the secondary sector. But there is a huge thrust that should be put in the tertiary sector, which should grow leaps and bounds, which is the services sector. And our dependence on agriculture gradually should come down, per se meaning to say, per se not meaning to say that uh, the growth should come down. The growth in agriculture sector is per se not much. You do not have, you do not see the kind of numbers what you see in the services sector. So it's very important for any particular state to grow. It's very important that secondary sector, that is, the, ter that is uh, the services sector, that is the tertiary sector, should grow leaps and bounds. In fact, uh, owing to this reason, the per capita income of Andhra Pradesh, if one were to compare with Telangana, is only 2,19,518. When compared to the figures of those in Telangana, you would see 3,12,398 for the year 2022-23. This is the per capita income. Predominantly, it is coming from Hyderabad. The reason why I'm saying this is we would have to have a balanced growth. We would have to have, we would have to harness the strengths that we have. We have a huge, such is the proactive nature of the government. 
and such is the conducive business friendly environment prevalent in the state that consistently for the past 3 years in the in the category of ease of doing business the state is rated number 1 this is one major achievement that the state can boast about uh, trying to showcase that we per se are very friendly to environment very friendly to industries now having said that it is it is attracted almost 13 lakh crores in the global investor summit which we concluded last year 352 mous were signed with an employment potential of close to 6 lakhs and uh, at a brisk pace these mous are being uh, translated into reality in fact out of 352 mous that uh, we have uh, actually signed in fact 39% of these mous have actually translated into actual uh, commissioning of the plants so at a brisk pace uh, these things are happening and uh, we have uh, also been the economy per se if one were to look at it just doesn't come with only the elite or the aloof or the big manufacturing sector alone coming up it's got a mix of it's got to be a mix of everything in fact uh, so much so that i would say that the state government has implemented in these 5 years several welfare programs orienting them towards sustainable self employment in fact every scheme of the state government if one were to notice the schemes especially the welfare schemes one would be surprised to see how, what kind of a transformational bearing these schemes have to begin with everything is dbt direct benefit transfer where there's no middleman in between where everything is transparent and there's no corruption there now having said that every scheme is hand holding women so much so that every scheme is translating say for instance i speak about uh, chey youth is one particular scheme the scheme actually narrates hand holding women the same particular women consistently for 4 years every year giving 18750 rupees for the same woman so in 4 years time you actually hand hold the same woman giving every year 18750 to the same woman while we are doing that we ensured that there is a bank tie up also coming into picture we have also ensured that big companies starting from amol to itc to reliance to procter and gamble to such kind of big companies also partnering with these women in sharing opportunity you know most of the employment cycle doesn't come from government employment government employment per se before we had come in probably we had 4 lakh jobs in government sector and probably our government being very proactive in actually providing for jobs could actually create another 2 lakh jobs which is actually very high before we had come in we had 4 lakhs for decades and after we had come in we actually created 50% more jobs in government sector but that is where it can end it cannot go beyond that you're talking about 4 lakhs being to 6 lakhs then per se the big industries also when we were to speak of if we were to speak of if we one were to see the translation of opportunities of jobs actually created per se for investment that is actually put in would probably translate to probably 
a crore of investment translating into one particular job. Not much. Maybe adding to another two or three lakhs, not beyond that. The major contribution comes from three other sectors. One is agriculture, which actually constitutes 62% of the workforce. Now what we have done is support agriculture, well, remember, in fact, the best part in agriculture is, the challenging part in agriculture is, even though the fact still remains that 62% of the population depend on agriculture, the fact is, 50% of the land holding is less than 1.25 acres, that is half hectare. If one were to translate this land holding into the calculation sake as to up to one hectare, if one were to take into consideration, then you're, talk, you're talking about 70% of the land holding is held, is within one hectare. We have very small and marginal farmers, and if these small and marginal farmers do not make money, the economy is shattered. What we did, what we could actually do, is come up with those initiatives to handhold farmers through RBKs, setting up of Raitu Barosa Kendras, where every village has one, where you have an agricultural graduate sitting in those villages, in those RBKs, where everything from seed to sale of crop is handheld through these RBKs. And with such kind of micromanagement, also incentivizing farmers with the production incentives as well, that farming sector could survive. This is one major sector which actually comes to give you a support for the employment. Then the other major sector which is another sector which actually supports MSMEs. MSMEs also, the one word to speak of, talking about if industries, mega industries, big industries constitute maybe three lakh, four lakh jobs, you're talking about MSMEs which actually constitute more than 30 lakh jobs. There per se, the employability rate is more. Every MSME is small but yet employs more number of people when conversion ratio takes place from investment perspective. But these 30 lakhs, these 3 lakhs, these 4 lakhs, these are not the numbers. Dominantly self-employed sections. Self-employed sections constitute a primary more than 1.5 crore population actually should be doing well for the economy to do well. And through various schemes, various platforms, we've ensured that these self-employed sections are handheld, given support through various schemes. You know, before, I'll give you an example. Before we had come in, we were talking about self-help which actually constitute more than a crore of women. Before we had come in, the self-help groups had an NPA and outstanding loans to the extent of 18%. Today, the same self-help groups, the outstanding loans and uh, the NPAs, if one were to look at in this sector now, it is just 0.3%. And a crore of women, livelihoods are dependent on that. Same word, if one were to see the same thing, in every scheme, like Vahana Mitra, which talks about self-employed sections who actually are driving the cabs, who are actually driving the auto, autos. If economy there fails, the entire state fails. We're talking about uh, uh, barbers, we're 
talking about so many such self employed sections running into lakhs of lakhs running into lakhs and together running into crores which actually have been supported so as to render phenomenal growth rate in fact uh, uh, when we had come in in 2018 19 our state was figuring probably uh, the least among the states in growth rate in gsdp growth rates the last year numbers if one were to say we are coming we we, we are figuring in top 5 states in the country if gsdp growth rate was to be were to be figured in similarly every initiative that we have taken in supporting every sector the msmes for instance our state can boast about that we had ensured the timely msme incentives were given even during the times of covid that actually protected the msme sector so much so that today the kind of growth that we have seen in msc sectors was so unprecedented never so happened in the state of andhra pradesh in fact uh, the reasons have uh, resulted in the state's manufacturing gva when viewed as a percentage of india's manufacturing gva increasing to 4% during 2019 to 24 from the corresponding figure of 2.9% during 2014 to 19 that was the previous regime that is the kind of gva contribution states manufacturing gva when compared to a percentage of india's manufacturing gva if one were to compare that we are actually contributing 4% now versus in the previous regime contributing to only 2.9% in those days as i've said the state services sector contributes to only 40% of the state's gva when compared to the national average of 55% and when compared to telangana's state's average of 63% now this is a position that was occasioned by the state's bifurcation that has deprived andhra pradesh of hyderabad city and the economic benefits associated with it now how do we bring about a change which would actually help boost the state's economy now what do we do about vizac now how do we boost Vizac's growth story, so that ultimately we come across a situation where, at least ten years down the line, starting today, at least we compete with Hyderabad or we compete with Bangalore or we compete with Chennai. So, what exactly does Vision Vizac, Vision Visaka mean? So until and unless we think in those terms until and unless we have passion for this particular place for this particular city this vision can never be visualized can never be obtained can never be realized a lot of people in fact uh, when i speak of these words when i say the first thing what anybody should be doing is to come and stay here as a chief minister if i were to say this unfortunately we have an opposition in the state and uh, we also have a lot of vested interests and also a negative media with vested interests who support the opposition i think many of you also are aware of it that they make a such a hue and cry that in, in fact that uh, we shifting over to vizac they try to make an issue out of it saying that somebody is coming to vizac because they want to grab the lands here 
we want to do that they want to do that and these kind of stories shamelessly are written shamelessly are projected and all for what so they don't want the chief minister to come here they go to the court court cases are filed all for what they don't want chief minister to come here now why if the chief minister comes here this area will grow because there's ownership which is going to come for this area there would be a christening of the city as executive capital so they don't want the chief minister to come here because they have vested interests elsewhere they bought land before the capital could be announced elsewhere thousands of acres in private hands benami lands and they're all scared the moment this becomes the executive capital the land rates there would further plunge and because of this western western interest today wisak has taken the beating so going forward i am here to assure everybody here that there would be changes because this is inevitable if one were to compete with hyderabad compete with chennai compete with bangalore is very important that wisak becomes the economic growth engine <laughs> that is it. in fact if i were to have any vested interest probably i would be having i would be speaking about kadappa see for me i am this the state is ours to everyone here and one in my place should start should think in terms of what is good for the next generation how would we want our children to be positioned how will, how are will the state's revenues going to be where is the growth going to come from and how exactly can we boost these revenues to support the growth of andhra pradesh if we do not think like this in terms of growth for wisak then who would think if the vision of the leader is wrong if the vision of the leader is negative then wisak will not grow today unfortunately only person standing for visakhapatnam as executive capital is only me <laughs> unfortunately this is the reality fighting against the entire opposition fighting against vested interests of the media everybody wanting that visakhapatnam is not declared as executive capital this is the reality everybody should keep this in mind understand this reality now moving further wisak would have to develop i am assuring you okay, we have court cases going on we have so many people trying to oppose everything but i am assuring you post election my stay would be in wisak In fact my swearing in ceremony also would be in Vizag
This is my commitment to Vizac. And now, what is the vision for Vizac? See, we, we need to have 10 year vision. We would have to own this city, Kursen, the city as executive capital, become part of the city. And have a 10 year vision. You know, we need to have a roadmap which is workable, which is doable. It cannot be a roadmap where we just dream big but yet achieve nothing. Because it is impractical. Not so. We need to have a practical solution. We need to have a practical approach. And we need to have a vision which is realizable in 10 years time. Of course, this vision is one vision which cannot be alone done by the state government. It would have to be the state government. It would have to be the central government. It would have to be a PPP model. It would have to be encouraging private people also to become part of the vision. All these people become part of this vision, only then we can realize Vizac is the next competitor in a decade's time to Hyderabad, Bangalore, or Chennai. In fact, uh, why I wasn't, why I was opposed to the idea, thing there. And according to them, just to provide for the basic infrastructure, that is these roads, the water, electricity, and these kind of basic infrastructure alone, according to their own calculations, with the DPR that they have produced, costs almost 2 crores per acre, which is on a 50,000 acres of barren land, if one were to just lay these basic infrastructure requirements put in place, we're talking about 1 lakh investments, 1 lakh crores of money, which would have to be put in before any buildings could come up or before we could talk about anything else other than the basic roads or the basic electricity or the basic water or the basic stuff. Now per se, does anybody have 1 lakh crores to be pumped in? And if this 1 lakh crores were to be pumped in today, it's going to cost 1, one lakh crores. But if this 1 lakh crores would be pumped in maybe in 20 years time, presuming 5,000 crores of outlay every year approximately, what one could actually probably afford. So there's nothing there. Then you're talking about 20 years. Then in 20 years time, 1 lakh crore probably be, would, would become 7, 8 lakhs or 10 lakh crores. The expenditure, what you thought about as 1 lakh crores today, in 20 years would actually be 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, probably the net present value calculations of probably 1 lakh crores 20 years down the line would probably be 1 were to calculate 1 lakh crores today, 20 years down it would be 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 20 lakh crores. And which is going to be a dream chasing. You would never be anywhere. That is the reason why I say I am nothing against it. It's only something that we can't do it. Whereas here in Vizac we have a place which already has this basic infrastructure put in place. We already have roads. We, have a, we already have good roads. We already have electricity, good electricity. We have good water connections. We have good everything. Basic infrastructure is already put in place. So all what we need to do is given that finishing touches, just give it a little bit of finishing touches and it would transform into something much, much, much bigger. 
And what are those finishing touches that we need to give? An iconic secretariat? The moment we shift here and christen it as executive capital, you obviously would have the entire employees also come and stationed here for which a secretariat building. Why construct an ordinary secretariat building? Construct something iconic which would stand out, which would attract the entire country to see. An iconic secretariat, an iconic convention center. People talk about uh, one of uh, geo convention center. The latest, the biggest, the best, these are the names that they give. Here we have something like that, not much of a cost. Why can't we have one here so that the entire world, entire country looks up? Iconic stadium, there's one in Ahmedabad, investment is probably 800 crores, 1000 crores. Not much of an investment, but the entire country talks about it. Entire country talks about that stadium. And whensoever a match is played between the countries, that stadium is glorified. It is spoken about by the entire country. Entire world sees that stadium. All these that I speak about are iconic. All these, if they were to be commissioned, would actually pitch Vizac on the global scale. Would draw eyeballs, not only of the country, but the whole world, to actually look at Vizac. What I have, what we have envisioned for Vizac, iconic secretariat, iconic convention center, iconic stadium, institute of emerging technologies, one beautiful institute wherein the talent for any emerging technologies is tutored here. If our students could be given that kind of skills, tutored here, this would be positioned as something else. We have the Bogapuram International Airport coming up. At a very brisk pace, the work is happening. And within the next uh, 15 months or 18 months, this project would actually see the light of the day. Moving at a very brisk pace. Then connectivity to the Bogapuram International Airport. A six lane beach corridor road with beautiful green lawns on either side of the roads. Six lane road to Bogapuram International Airport. They're talking about a metro rail. Our Vizac is probably the only metro, I guess, which does not have a metro rail. So getting funds for metro rail per se, I don't think it's that difficult. Because it might cost another 14,000 crores, but 60% of the funding comes in PPP model by the developer. Another 40 percent is to be shared by central and the state government. Central shares 20 percent, state shares 20 percent of the 14,000 crore investment. Of course we are pushing for the entire 40 percent to be borne by the central government. That's a different story. But even if that doesn't happen, we're still talking about 20 percent contribution from the state government. And then you could actually see a 14,000 crore metro rail project also take off. Then we're building a Molapet port in Srikakulam. 
within the next one year, the molar plate port would actually start functioning. And we have Vizac, Gogapuram International Airport, which is 30 kilometers from the airport. And then from there, the molar plate port is just another 110 kilometers or so. So you have entire corridor from Vizac International Airport and then Molapet Port. A horizontal growth corridor which could take off, which already has an existing national highway, I think six lane or eight lane highway, it's already the works are at a best pace. Then you have a data center where the submarine cable which is coming from Singapore. A data center, Adani is doing it. A huge investment, 27,000 crores of investment is coming there. And since it's a private investment, and Adani is doing it, the works of the land from our side, everything that needs to be done is already done. They've already started the work, the plans are submitted. And within the next five, six years, in a, in a staggered way, in a phased manner, they would actually ensure that this project also comes up. Then you have hospitality industry, which also needs to be looked into, which also needs to be given a little bit of boost, for which we have ensured that Oberoi and Mayfair groups have given certain bits of land for them to develop five star plus resorts here as well as, as well in Vizac where Vizac is short and it doesn't have resorts. It has some good hotels but it doesn't have resorts. So this five star plus category resorts by Oberoi or Mayfair would actually bridge in that gap. The land has already been given to these private people and they're already on the verge of uh, starting the construction and within the next two years or so you would actually start them. You would actually start you would actually see them commissioned. Then NTPC Green Hydrogen Project. This is also around about 30,000 crore investment of NTPC. This project, fortunately yesterday, Prime Minister virtually laid the foundation stone. So this is also going to be a reality. So these, all these that I just spoke about, they're not things that cannot be achieved. All these things are, can be realizable. Within the next 10 years, in a staggered manner, we would see all these things coming up. Because all these things that I spoke about are not big. Something which, are, something which is unimaginable. No, not so. All these things are realizable because they're not something, they're not, they, they, they do not post those numbers which would actually say they are not realizable. And there is of course one aspiration what I'm trying to negotiate with the Prime Minister also. If this thing goes well, we would have this as well. A high speed uh, rail corridor from uh, Hyderabad to Vizac passing through Vijayawada, and then Vijayawada to Bangalore passing through Karnul and Kadapa. Karnul and Kadapa. But this is an aspiration. If it happens, it happens. Even if it doesn't happen, 10 years is a big enough span for us to pursue that it happens. Even though this is an aspiration currently with us, the rest of the stuff that I spoke about are all realizable. So with all these things coming up in Vizac and the Chief Minister coming and stationed in Vizac, it would attract a lot of people to come and settle down in Vizac as well. And Vizac in 10 years time with all these iconic buildings taking shape would actually 
compete with the best in the world with the best in india definitely for sure in fact uh, my people have uh, gone ahead and uh, uh given a presentation to this effect we can all watch myself included i'll also be sitting with you on the other side let's share the officials also for actually putting in this kind of energy and effort because you know it takes a lot of passion to actually be involved you know what needs to be done for visa how do we do it and uh, it takes a lot of passion and, uh, in fact uh, when i was asked to come here i said fine i because looking at their passion i wanted to encourage them as well and i also wanted to give a kind of uh, confidence to the people of wisac in particular that yes wisac in spite of all the difficulties and hurdles that were posed we will prevail we will survive and we will bounce back is what the final message would be thank you all for patient hearing i hope that uh, we all share this dream and uh, it would be realized at the earliest because i can't repeat the whole thing in telugu i tried but when i thought again i'll deviate maybe some other occasion in telugu maybe some other occasion in telugu i would do so Vishakhapatnam and thereby the development of Andhra Pradesh truly truly confidence inducing very very inspiring thank you very much sir for the confidence inducing talk on your vision for Andhra Pradesh uh, and thank you for joining the audience it's a privilege for all of us that you will be watching the AV with them i would now like to call upon sri um, uh, sri lakshmi ma'am special chief secretary department of municipal administration and urban development government of andhra pradesh to please come on to the days and make the big announcement of the day and launch the av i thank the honorable cm for his brilliant address on his vision for the development of andhra pradesh and visakhapatnam as part of the development road map of the state we now present the development plan for the next 5 years for visakhapatnam and its hinterland in the form of a magnificent film titled vision visakha the film encapsulates the plans for the development of visakhapatnam by the government by partnering with the private sector by facilitating the private sector to grow and also by taking up various schemes by the government honorable chief minister and august members of the audience i now present to you vision vishaka there are very few cities that have emerged as the business and financial nerve centers of the world new york london frankfurt dubai hong kong and singapore have established themselves as prominent global centers for commerce and finance In India, Mumbai on the west coast has emerged as a major business and financial center. However, its rise has now been constrained by overpopulation, lack of ease in doing business, infra congestion and limitations in real estate. Located on the east coast of Andhra Pradesh, Visakhapatnam now holds the potential to compete with some of the best cities in the world in development, innovation, and natural scenic wonders. Rightly assessing the potential of Visakhapatnam to become a global cosmopolitan city and the enormous opportunities for it, Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Shri Y S Jagan Mohan Reddy has conceived the outstanding Vision Visakha. 
Vision Vishakha aims to support Vishakhapatnam as a home for high creative environment, sustainability, and natural scenic creative environment, sustainability, and natural scenic beauty to go on to become a leading financial new South Coast Railway Zone and freight corridor from Sontiam to Simhachalam that will be undertaken at a cost of 196 crores. 14,000. To develop Vishakhapatnam at IT, ITES, crores are allocated for the development of stormwater drains in the city. As far as livability and social infrastructure is concerned, 100 parks will be taken up with 50 crores for the recreation and health of the citizens. One hundred and fifty lakes will be developed in a phased manner in the city with a sum of two hundred and fifty crores. Regarding sports facilities, seven stadiums will be developed with a budget of one hundred and sixty nine crores. Along with demonstrating his commitment towards encouraging sports through the one of a kind statewide Arudam Adra program. Shri Y S of 300 crores in this Vishakha vision in order to place Vishakhapatnam on the sports map of the world. V the world. VMRDA projects include a natural history park, museum, and research institute with 108 crores, a convention center with 220 crores, an urban entertainment zone with 40 crores, and Siripuram multi-level car park with 87 crores. About 150,000 houses worth 4,039 crores are being constructed through Jagannana colonies and Didgo houses for the construction of affordable houses for the common citizens. Vishakhapatnam has unlimited opportunities in the tourism sector. With more than 30 beaches to attract tourists, there is no area better than Vishakhapatnam for tourist development. Vishakhapatnam owns tourist attractions that are proposed to be developed with around 1,500 crores. Apart from that, major star hotels like Oberoi, Mayfair will also be facilitated to attract global tourists to the city. Shri Y S Jagan Mohan Reddy also proposed the establishment of a global convention center worth 500 crores and several malls such as in Norbert Mall worth 750 crores. Under the infrastructure for Eco Vizac, clean energy, 178.22 crores have been proposed for the development of Nagarvanalu, Mudasarlova and Meghadrigadda floating solar plants, two and three wheeler electric transport projects. <laughs> Chief Minister Y S Jagan Mohan Reddy's impeccable foresight resulted in a magnificent mission to develop Vishakhapatnam into a global city with spell-binding amenities. A successful realization of this vision is destined to make this city of destiny a remarkable cosmopolitan center in no time. That was a comprehensive roadmap presented to you, taking into consideration connectivity, livability, social infrastructure, urban planning, industrial growth, sustainability, and climate resilience. The Honorable Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Sri Vyas Jagan Mohan Redigaru, is well on his way to achieving Vision Vishakha and many other such projects for other cities of the state as well. He has already unveiled projects worth more than 1500 crores as you saw in the audiovisual uh, presentation. Um, to serve as an illustrious reminder of this bold and ambitious vision Vishakha, the government of Andhra Pradesh has curated a coffee table book. To release this coffee table book, I request the Honorable CM 
श्री वाई एस जगन मोहन रेड्डी गारू एंड रिस्पेक्टेड मिनिस्टर्स एंड अदर डिग्नेटरीज टू प्लीज कम ऑन टू द डेज टू रिलीज द बुक Thank you so much sir for inducing this audience with your confidence your passion for your vision vishakha that's going to be the iconic secretariat iconic secretariat that will lure the eyes not only of the entire country but also of the entire world as shared in vision vishakha by the very driven young dynamic leader of andhra pradesh the honorable chief minister shri y s jagan mohan reddy garu i would also like to thank shri budimuthiala naidu garu deputy chief minister of andhra pradesh Shri Gurivara Amarnath Garu Honorable Minister of IT and Industries Srimati Veeradala Rajani Garu uh, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare District in charge Shri Adimula Pusuresh Garu Honorable MAUD Minister Shri YV Subbareddy Garu Honorable MP of Rajya Sabha Shri